Well, hello everyone, this is Mindless Bow, and welcome to my very first collectibles guide. Now, your first file is located already in your inventory. It was the email that was sent to you by your worthless, lying bitch of a wife, Mia. And all you have to do is go into your inventory, pull it up, and hit X for it to count. Next, we go for our first VHS tape. And it is not located within the locked cupboard that needs the bolt cutters like in the demo. It's up on the second floor, pretty much where the attic access is, next to what is your now new, you know, safe location. Now, in order to get the first antique coin, and yes, I missed this on my first playthrough, you actually have to play the tape and get the lock pick as Clancy. Only it is in a different location. It is actually right at your feet. Very, very easy to miss. Anyone who got this on the first try is freaking amazing. But, you know, I obviously missed it as well as a lot of people missed it. And just like in the original demo, you have to go, you have to unlock the drawer. There will be a, a picture that's actually in the other drawer in Ethan's timeline. But once you're done playing the tape and you can just exit out of the tape, you know, we obviously all know that the thing's underneath the fireplace by now. And you go back to the kitchen and you're able to receive your first antique coin. And I believe I believe you're able to miss one. There's you only need seventeen coins, so you know, unless you're going for the achievement in order to get the Magnum and the other two cages open, you only need seventeen out of the eighteen coins anyways. Now, this is another one that got me. At this point in the game I saw that I can hit X and actually pull up text on screen. But for a note like this, I didn't think it was necessary. There was no real storyline necessary stuff on here. But it's actually two-sided. And you need to click the X on both sides in order for this to count. And by counting, I mean it'll show up in your map into the files. Now, your next two files are located right after your Donner dinner party with the Baker family. you got a hardware store list here on the wall right in front of the kind of... Uh, I forget the name what that furniture setup is. Whenever they have that in the kitchen leading into the dining room. And the next one is in a missing uh, persons report about our three uh, sewer gators who went missing in the, what is known as the living room. Now your second antique coin is after you locate the, the trap door key at the end of the hallway there and come back down and your second coin will be here on the lawnmower. And I made the note in my let's play, which I am doing a let's play for this currently. Why the hell are there so many lawnmowers underground? Now we got a succession of bobbleheads here. After you finish going through the thing and, you know, get your knife from the cop and do the garage thing, you find your first bobblehead underneath your first, well, your second save location, but your first inside the house. And then making your way into the far end of the hall, which you've probably already seen this bobblehead once before you got the option to get the knife, is all the way back here at the dead end. It also took me a while my first playthrough to realize it was even supposed to do anything with these bobbleheads, because they introduce them before you have a knife to do anything about them. <clears throat> now number three over here is located right next to the door with a very helpful shoot me shoot me note and to the right of that is your third antique coin in the drawer and also in this what is known as the main hall is your uh, sixth file it's another kind of missing persons story newspaper file All right, now moving on upstairs to the left wing in what is known as the recreation room. There's a whole shitload of stuff here. You got an antique coin on the little furnace here. You got another bobblehead in the basket right behind it. And to the left, you have another file. And still there's yet another file in this room. That one's Marguerite complaining about the goddamn hippie. And then we got another file here, Jack talking about the storm and how it destroyed the old house, which is the storm that washed up the ship, by the way. And right behind this, you have the videotape number two, which has, uh, you know, Mia kind of running and hiding from Marguerite in the old house. Now, if we go all the way back around to the bathroom, which is right around the corner here, we have another antique coin hidden inside the toilet. Which is a rather interesting place to hide an antique coin, but you know, we found plenty of things in toilets and bathtubs before in the Resident Evil series, so not too completely unbelievable. Now after you get your uh, the wood plinth, whatever the hell it's called, to do the eagle to open this up, which is also in that bathtub, you get access to this back room. Pretty sure it's called the drawing room. Kind of looks like his little... Uh, well, actually kind of looks like... This is kind of rec room man cave, actually. But uh, your 
fifth bobblehead is over here by the crow door, which you won't be able to unlock yet at this point. And then antique coin number six is in the only room you can exit through that's been shoved into an ashtray. Now continuing on, we go over to our next save location right before the basement steps and we find files number 9 and 10 within the drawer to the right of your first storage cabinet or second storage cabinet sorry and once again this is a front and back one that you need to look at both sides and click X to get it to count for your inventory and it's always good to go back and check just to make sure it counted now 11 is kind of a storyline one you really can't avoid this one because it gives you the it gives you the solution to the puzzle in the incinerator room and it's right just above the sink this was kind of a neat puzzle. Stumped me for like a couple minutes, but it was still a neat puzzle. Now, Bobblehead 6 is also down here in the basement. And it's the far back room. And you got to go down the stairs to the locked snake door, which will eventually lead to uh, the area where you fight Jack with his crazy scissor chainsaw thing. And next is a coin that's pretty much from the room that we just came from to come down these steps and I didn't notice this till my second playthrough. There's a coin hidden in the wall behind this pallet. That was a very good well hidden one on the Resident Evil's part. Now we're back up to the rec room. We've obviously got the scorpion key from down in the basement and we're going into uh, grandma's room. Creepy old grandma. And there's two files in here. That one uh, telling you where all the Cerberus keys are, which you, hopefully you already found two out of three by now. And then another one talking about uh, the fungus growing inside of poor Granny's brain. Now we finally made our way outside. We got all the Cerberus keys. And here's another antique coin that I missed on my first playthrough. Around here in the flower pot, you have antique coin number eight. And then we have a bobblehead underneath the steps leading into the trailer. And there he is. Now inside the trailer you got a couple more things. You got an antique coin right in front of the Magnum bird cage. Which if you haven't figured it out by now, it was a very obvious kind of, you know, you put the coins in here. And then we have file number 14 here pinned up on the wall to the left of that. Alright, so now we're over here in the old house finally. And you kind of got to bust a hive to get to this little access. This is where eventually you'll see Lucas grab Mia. And you got a pretty well hidden bobblehead there down by the pallet. And you have the 10th coin. Not very hid well at all. Kind of on the end of that little uh, push cart. Now, still messing around in the old house. We're going out to where our save location is here. And there is another bobblehead behind that kind of dangly 70s fringe crap. Not very tasteful people the bakers are. And now bobblehead number 10 is in the pit where Mia had to crawl in her videotape and where you find the crank to uh, kind of cross the bridge in that main room of the old house. And he's hidden behind a nice styrofoam cup. Now once you come out of there, or you can do it before you go into there, up by that locked crow door there is a note from Marguerite saying to stay the hell away from her altar and more or less trashing Zoe. Now once you finally get the outside here in order to you know finish building your flamethrower, you get another antique coin which I thought was in there on my second playthrough when I recorded this but forgot that it's another one located on a toilet. They like using toilets to store things. Now you obviously got your crow key and you're going to go check out her altar. And that is where the next file is on the inside of this case here. And man, this scared the shit out of me the first time. Don't really understand why it does the targeting thing and you figure out that it was Mia's watch to hunt down Evelyn. But I thought it meant we were about to get targeted by some hunters and that that watch was going to more or less be our death. Now back here we have even more stuff. We have another file. And we have another bobblehead and an antique coin around the corner where we're going to eventually have to fight Marguerite to get the lantern. 
to go into what is what I consider the creepiest part of the game, going into Evelyn's part of the house. And then there's our coin over there in the drawer. Alright, so now this is after we've gotten the arm from Evelyn's thing, and you receive a phone call from Lucas, who has Zoe kidnapped, and wants you to go look into the fridge for a present. Now he wants to start playing games, and there's a note on the back of the cop's head. Once again, this is a storyline one, so that's not a hard one to miss. And obviously we have the snake key at this point as well, and inside the master bedroom we have a note explaining the clock puzzle on the globe, and that counts as another file. Now we make it to Lucas's creepy childhood bedroom, and we got a bunch of stuff through here. <clears throat> we got two files, one here on the left of the room. We got another one over here to the right. This is one about how he locked the kid up into the attic and left him up there to die, more or less. And now we need to go up into the attic, which the hidden switch is in the lamp. Let's see, disguise his trophy as a lamp, trying to be clever. Go up the steps for another bobblehead and my favorite tape, the happy birthday tape. And I didn't really, I wasn't going to bother putting the VHS, VHSs into this uh, guide, but I ended up anyways, just because, you know, who knows, someone might have actually missed that. I mean, I've missed stupider things in gameplays before. Now we are in the training facility. And we have an antique coin in here in the drawer. And this is after blowing up all the explosives that are in this room. And getting myself killed, forgetting that they're in there making this recording. And around the corner in the kind of stable area, there's a bobblehead. And I missed this one because you really don't hear them. You know, it's like you're in here and you can't even hear them up there. Normally you can always hear them and I just couldn't hear this one. So this was a definite miss on my part. Now, after we fight the big boss and come up, we get our... This is another storyline one, basically, because this is the code to get into our time in the happy birthday trap. And there's another coin here on the other side of him before you go back down to the key code door. Alright, so we're still in the area, and this is after kind of pissing off Lucas and going through the trap, obviously, since we knew the thing. And this was another one I missed once again. You can tell you really don't hear him there. And he's on the other side of the door of Lucas's control room. Now this is when we're out here on the boats. We're kind of finally making our way to the end of the house playthrough. And you gotta, you know, crank the things around. And he's hidden underneath the fishing net. Now we've gotten through the main boss. And this is, we finally gained control of Mia again. And she's in the wrecked ship. This is kind of a first come, first serve. If you don't get this one now, you miss it. As you can see on the map... It's kind of hard to explain where it is, but you'll know it when you go through the tunnels. And this is another one that I missed. I actually found that last coin, but this one I totally missed. Down here in the gunk, in the bare recorder, with no evidence whatsoever, is another hidden coin. Alright, we're in the bunk rooms now, and this is still before we watch the last tape. We find uh, two fouls in these rooms, one in this one and the one in the conjoining room. There's the other one over there on the table. Alright, now this is where we find our final VHS tape and learn about Mia's past, where she remembers what the hell was going on, and that not only was she trying to be a normal housewife, but she was also working for some type of bio bioterror terrorist agency, sorry. Now, to get the next file, you actually have to play the tape. Now, I'm not sure if you have to play the tape, because after the tape is done, you can actually find uh, this same note in the room once you're back in Mia in real time. But I don't know if you have to get it on this one for it to count or not. I didn't bother trying. Now, after we watch the tape, we go out here... And we got this little case on the floor. And it has another note that we need to read. And this was kind of her, uh, what she was going to use to stop Evelyn. Now here's another bobblehead to come over here on the steps. This one actually puzzled me. I found it on my first playthrough, but I could not figure out where the hell he was. It was kind of weird where you heard the noise. And I just didn't notice him over there on the landing to the steps. Now our next foul is 
another storyline one to figure out how to fix the elevator. So that's another obvious one. And our next bobblehead is in this room. And this part's important. There's really no, you know, reason for you to go into this door. You know, so you got to make sure you go over to here. Go up this ladder. The bobblehead is on the ledge right opposite the ladder. So if you do your little about face move, you'll see him there. And now in order to get the next antique coin, this is your only chance to get a lock pick in this ship area. So you have to get this lock pick in order to get this next coin. There's a lock pick there. And then you can see right here we switch to the room. And it's in this kind of orangish red toolbox. And that's coin number 17. Almost finished. <clears throat> Alright, this is right before the main battle. Or not the main battle, but you know, once she finally uh, uh, reconnects with Ethan and Evelyn. And of course you need a corrosive left over, which if you found all the things, you got more than enough corrosive left over. And that's the final antique coin. Now our bobblehead, we're finally in control of Ethan, and we've come up into the salt mines after leaving the ship and walking through the swamp. And this one is here on the ledge outside of the shack. Now this is another one that had me confused. I didn't. I went back here and got this item that's underneath these barrels you see, but I did not hear him or notice that he was up there. The only time you hear him is when you actually walk through that area later on, and obviously once you're on the other side of those barrels on that walkway, you cannot hit him. So that was another tricky one. And now we have the last of our files. All five of these are in these two rooms together. After you get done with the laptop, the next four files are in the adjacent room. And you got one there. Now next you have the case where you uh, synthesize the, the serum to stop Evelyn. Kind of got to read the instructions on the back. Like I said, this was the same case that you found on the ship, only it's not uh, it's not all uh, X'd out and crossed out. Now there's another. Number 31 is over here on the table. Rather long one with a lot of X'd out words. And then we have our final file for our achievement, which I actually get on this one since I, like I said, I screwed up a few not looking at the backs. And we get that lovely, lovely noise, though not as lovely as the Xbox 360 achievement alarm. And now we have our last bobblehead once you get back to the main house where the Mia and the uh, dolls are. And once you get that, you are done.